Today, I will describe a super resolution optical microscopy technique known as STORM, which stands for Stochastic Optical Reconstruction Microscopy. For over a century, scientists have considered the resolution of optical microscopy to be limited by the diffraction of light. This limitation is known as the diffraction limit. In far-field microscopy, think of a standard microscope, a point source of light actually appears as a disk surrounded by a set of concentric rings, rather than a point. This pattern is known as an airy disk, and its diameter depends on the wavelength of light and the properties of your microscope. In 1873, Ernst Abbe first described the diffraction-limited resolution of a microscope as the wavelength of light divided by twice the numerical aperture of the microscope. Today, most oil objectives have a maximum NA of 1.25, so even when imaging in the UV range with a wavelength around 250 nanometers, the maximum resolution of your microscope is limited to around 200 nanometers. However, in 2006, multiple research groups achieved single molecule resolution in optical microscopy by implementing sequential readout of fluorescent molecules. Three techniques, known as STORM, PALM, and F-PALM, implemented this technique to achieve subdiffraction limit resolution. For example, if three neighboring fluorophores are excited simultaneously and lie within 200 nanometers of each other, their airy patterns will overlap and you will not be able to distinguish between molecules. However, if you separate the fluorophore's activation in time and excite them individually, it is possible to resolve single molecules. You can then overlay the position of each fluorophore into a composite image to reveal the underlying structure with resolution beyond the diffraction limit. To activate fluorophores individually, STORM utilizes stochastic photo switching of fluorophores between activated and dark states. Switching is most commonly achieved using an activation laser with a limit of power that any given molecule has only a small chance of being photoactivated at any given time. A sample is then imaged over a few frames until the target fluorophore switched back into the dark state or become photobleached. For example, STORM was originally developed using a pair of red dyes known as Psi-3 and Psi-5, which are together known as a cyanine switch. Psi-3 functions as the activator dye, while Psi-5 acts as the reporter. When under a low-powered red laser, Psi-5 has a low chance of becoming activated, but mostly remains in its inactive state. However, when Psi-3 is activated by a green laser, Psi-5 is triggered and emits a series of photons before returning to its dark state. This pair of dyes are very bright and can be switched on and off hundreds of times before permanently photobleaching, which makes them ideal dyes for storm imaging. After a fluorophore is activated, photons are collected by the camera over 1-3 to three frames. Photon distribution can then be fit with a Gaussian curve to localize the point source of the photons and determine the standard error of its predicted position. This formula can be simplified to calculate the uncertainty of a fluorophore's position based on the standard deviation of a Gaussian curve that approximates the point spread function of the source and the number of photons collected from the fluorophore during a given excitation cycle. This means that lateral resolution of storm is dependent on the number of photons that can be captured from an individual molecule. For instance, collecting 10,000 photons generally results in a resolution close to 1 to 2 nanometers, while only collecting 400 photons could limit resolution to 20 nanometers. For this reason, ideal dyes for storm imaging include molecules that have a high contrast ratio, which means they are very bright during the activated state and dark during the inactive state. This maximizes the number of photons that can be captured per switching cycle, while minimizing the amount of background excitation. Though STORM has significantly improved the potential resolution of optical microscopy, it is not without limitations. Limiting factors in STORM imaging typically include the contrast of fluorescent probes, background autofluorescence from the sample and surrounding fluorophores, long acquisition times, since you must sacrifice some temporal resolution for spatial resolution, and the accuracy of probe localization. For instance, immunohistochemistry is generally incompatible with STORM, since antibody binding distances the fluorescent probes from the molecule of interest, often by up to 20 nanometers. Despite these limitations, STORM has some amazing capabilities and can be used with multiple colored probes for 3D imaging and to image live cells. Future work to improve STORM will likely focus on improving the brightness and contrast of fluorescent probes while improving image acquisition rates and image processing capabilities.
Finally, the 2014 Nobel Prize in Chemistry was actually awarded to super-resolved fluorescence microscopy. The award was given to three scientists, Eric Betzig, William Merner, and Stefan Heil. And with that, I'll end my video. I hope you learned something about super-resolution optical microscopy today.